Hello, and welcome to this tutorial of the Virtual Pulse Simulation Platform. Virtual Pulse stands for Population in Urban Landscape for Sustainable Built Environments. It is an energy simulation platform to aid in the simulation of urban environments. Now, this tutorial, along with more information on energy modeling, is available at buildsci.us slash software. Along with that, there's additional resources at the bottom for software for OpenStudio Energy Plus, SketchUp, and tutorials for those softwares, along with the link to this video. <clears throat> now, to start Virtual Pulse, go to the Construct tab, and you will get to a map. The idea of this map is that you can outline the footprint of your building and use that to build geometries. I'm going to use the Department of Cell Biology here at the University of Maryland as my starting building. As such, I choose my building footprint. You want to select a building footprint that most resembles the footprint of the building that you're supposed to be modeling. I select a T-shape, and then I rotate my footprint to the correct orientation of my building, and then I use these white corner points and I drag them to match the footprint of the building. Now, as the energy simulations we're doing will be reduced order modeling, the footprint of the building does not need to exactly match these uh, default shapes that we're using. These shapes are a best fit type scenario and it helps us quickly build multiple geometries as the final version of this tool will be used to model whole urban environments. So the level of detail required is not as deep as you would initially believe. Building name, Department Cell Biology. Number of floors, five floors, four meters per floor. That's how we determine our building height. Then I click this green button to save, or I can click the red button to delete my points, this orange button to turn on and off the editing of the points, and as I showed earlier, these left two ones will rotate the points as such. Now that that rotation is correct, I can hit this green button to save it, and now that saves that building into the, the software. So now I can edit something as simple as the colors if I have multiple buildings, but as I'm just going to do one building for this demonstration, I'm going to move on to the buildings tab up here at the top. When you go to the buildings tab, that will show you a list of all the buildings that you have entered into the software. So now I can go back and forth from the construct tab to the buildings tab and add more buildings if I wish. Say the College of Agricultural and Natural Resources. with four floors, four meter per height, and a wonderful U-shape. Rotate it to match. A key thing to note here uh, when you're moving these points is that these middle points you see here should not be used. If you click one of those, they will add another point to your shape and will throw off the uh, building geometry. Uh, in later versions, those will be disabled, but for the time being, please refrain from using them. Uh, the, if you use one and then later, uh, the simulations will kick you back in error. Uh, as you see here, my shape is not necessarily orthogonal, nor does it fit well, but the software will snap those points together to make everything nice right angles. So I have that, and now if I go back to buildings, you can see I have two buildings, the Department of Cell Biology and the Natural Resources Building. It also gives you some information about how tall they are, the footprint area, and the total area, so you can get an idea of how well the shape you made matches the actual footprint or total area of the building. Now, once you have your building entered from Construct, you have these additional uh, information that you must complete. So if I try to simulate my building now, it's going to pop me an error saying not enough information for energy simulation. 
As such, I'm going to go through these next tabs, Information, Architecture, Mechanical, Construction, and Schedules, to input additional information so I can accurately simulate my building. This information is pretty much simple. What year is the building built? I'm just going to say 1960. Weather. Uh, we have the standard weather templates for the people who are doing this at the University of Maryland. Please just use Washington, D.C. Function. Uh, initially, we just have these three uh, building types functioned. And what these do is they will pre-populate a lot of the settings with defaults based on the building type and your location and such. So right now, we're just going to do a medium office. Now onto architecture. Architecture here, you can see the results of what the map did for us. We see our building shape, and then all these different lengths that go into building the geometry in Energy Plus and Open Studio. Uh, so here you can also get an idea of if those dimensions correctly, at, correctly correspond to dimensions for your actual building. And now we set our window to wall ratio. I'm going to set it about 30%, and a perimeter zone depth of 3 meters. Now, as you can see, when I'm in a certain tab to go back, I just go back to building list. Mechanical. Here we can set our primary HVAC system. Uh, each system you choose here, there's the 10 primary HVAC systems from ASHRAE. And as you switch, there's an about tab at the bottom that we show you a little bit about what each system's about. So it gives you a system name, what building type it's used in, what kind of system type it is, the fan control, the cooling type, and the heating type. So now this uh, PHTP system is for residential, so I won't select that. But I will select a package rooftop VAV with reheat plus DirectX cooling. And now as each, each one obviously has different inputs, uh, everything else is defaulted. So I'm just going to go through and set what I think these efficiencies and set points are. Now also be wary when you're going through this platform that everything is in SI units. So it's all meters, it's all Celsius. So just be careful when you're looking at the numbers that you're not thinking their feet or Fahrenheit or putting in as such. So I'm just like new economizer. Now things like this, there are more options that are not available and those of options will be available in future releases of the software, but right now we have limited options. So please just select what is possible. You can set point 20. And once you have all the things selected, you just go back to the building list and you select a construction. Uh, construction sets will build a lot of the defaults I was talking about earlier based on different things. The age of your building, the location of your building, whether you're trying to hit high performance standards or just different levels of ASH rate standards. So I'm going to select ASH rate 2004. And that's just a typical construction set that the software is going to use. And then lastly, there's schedules. Now, schedules are all defaulted. Uh, so right now, this is just giving you an idea of what is going to be possible. But you're going to be able to set uh, occupancy schedules, fan schedules, lighting schedules, etc for every hour of the day, and then you're going to have weekday and weekend schedules. But again, right now this is not connecting to anything, so you do not have to worry about it. And lastly, I'm going to hit simulate. Now, once I hit simulate, the easiest thing to do is just stay on this page uh, and wait for the simulate to run. Now, once I click simulate, you'll see a loading bar is there. And then once the simulation finishes, it's going to return me with a blue, or sorry, a green button that says results. And that will take us to our results page. Now, a key thing to note during all of this is to not refresh your tab. If you refresh your tab, you will lose the buildings that you have entered. And as the login and sign up is not active right now, you will have to re-enter all your information. So I'm going to go into my results tab. And what these are, are these are just the primary inputs, IDF and OSM. IDF is for Energy Plus. OSM is an open studio model. And output, EIO, HTML, which will just give you results. And SQL, which is a database file of all the simulation results from Energy Plus. So you have your input files on the left here and your output files on the right here. And you can click on them. Now, when you click the HTML button, this one that will give you a new tab 
this shows you the HTML output, so just a web page, of what your building is. So now you can save this or favorite it, bookmark it, whatever you want. It will be there. And this just gives you an idea of how much energy your building used, uh, different conversion factors, information about your building area, end uses, etc. And this an idea is a way to compare uh, your building versus other buildings versus different options you may use when building your building in the platform. Now this is just the default output of Energy Plus. And as such, we also have the input IDF and OSM files that you can use to import these inputs that you just built in the Construct and Buildings tab. And then you can put them back into Open Studio and make further edits. Now, as I said at the beginning of the video, there are download links to Open Studio and NG Plus and SketchUp, which is a 3D modeling program in which you can open these files that are part of the output to view them, make further edits to the building geometries, construction, mechanical systems, etc., and rerun them as simulations. Now, as part of the simulation platform, we used Open Studio version 1.4, Energy Plus version 8.1, and those allow you to use the free version of SketchUp version 8. Further below here, there's tutorials on Open Studio, and that is the graphical input that you can allow you to build and expand on these models that you just created. And also, again, the link to this video, and also some notes I'm going to put up about what not to do. So the final reminder, things you should try and avoid in the Virtual Pulse platform is refreshing your page. Currently, that will lose uh, all your buildings. Your buildings are just saved for the current session of the tab. So if you leave uh, the tab, or not leave the tab, but if you refresh the tab, you will lose your data. And a good thing to note is also once you click on Simulate, try and stay in the Buildings tab. Sometimes there's issues where if you leave the tab or even go back to the construct page, uh, you won't get your results. So I thank you again for watching. Uh, if you have any more questions, please check out buildside.us-software where they have tutorial videos on energy modeling, this virtual pulse platform, and additional resources for energy modeling. Thank you. And as always, past performance does not necessarily predict future results.